before we get started, I highly suggest you watch the videos in the series that come before this one. There's one on the automatic handle for this toolbox. There's a part one of this toolbox. There's a part two of this toolbox. And of course, this is the part three. So there's four videos in total. White oak is a beautiful wood, it's really gorgeous, but it's incredibly unstable. So in this project I'm constantly fighting the wood, especially when it's a very small and thin piece of wood. On top of that, the wood is really trendy right now so the prices went up and I take personal offense to that. And my, uh, my wallet isn't a huge fan. In this backspace I want to make two just traditional non-funky drawers. I'm not going to focus a lot on the traditional joinery in this video, in the part one, I already went over how I do dovetails and kind of some theory on that, so it's not gonna be done again. But if you see some jointry, it was probably hand cut. All the dovetails were hand cut, and there's 45 of them in this entire build, which was a lot. I had such a blast, and my speed doubled by the end of this project. It was really good practice. The bottom of all the drawers on the toolbox are rebates and not grooves, and this saves about a quarter inch of depth which is really practical on such a compact build. Though it does also make things more complicated when it comes to finishing the drawers, but since I'm hand finishing the drawers it's not a big deal. To glue the drawer sides at the back of the toolbox, I like to take a piece of wood and wedge it between the two drawer sides, and that gives enough pressure for the glue up. I wish I had thought of this technique years ago when I started woodworking. It's so brilliantly simple and very versatile, it's perfect. The leather I used isn't ideal, it tends to scratch really easily, but I've made an apron from this in the past so it's what I had laying around, and leather is really expensive. For my chisel and rasp drawers, I sadly had to trim a few tools. These are the modified Narex chisels that I made in another video, so feel free to look at that. For the middle drawers, I decided to mostly make brass clasps, unlike the wooden ones which I used for the bottom two drawers. 
They were quite difficult to make and this is a woodworking channel so I'm not going to go into it that much. But the brass reduces deformation and it lets me have much higher forces on the clasp which lets me use a smaller more compact design that's also going to last longer. This specific clasp was rather challenging to make. The button is only going to be about a centimeter away from the drawer itself which means it has to be super compact. It's also going to be blindly assembled within the toolbox so a tapered pin is the easiest way to go. The larger drawer doesn't have any specifically assigned content, it's just an extra drawer. This system is a lot further from the button, which means I can use a lever instead of a vertically rising wedge. A lever based latching system has a lot less friction and a lot less stresses, which means that wood is a viable candidate for this job, which is why this one is made of wood and not the others. This is a latching mechanism from the inside. I forgot to film when I was adding the springs in. I made some simple plywood so I could have some drawer faces that move less, especially the bigger ones. I could have used Baltic birch but I wanted the colors to match properly. This was my original latching system idea for the whole toolbox. Every drawer was supposed to be like this. In purely technical terms, the issue with this system is that it has a heightened tendency to be completely dumb and stupid. I completely abandoned the idea after making a single drawer with this system, and it's one of the best decisions I've taken on this entire toolbox. That's when I switched to the new clasping system, which works so much better. Its only drawback is that it's quite long to make, and routing the push rods around the toolbox can be a bit of a headache, but it's kind of worth it. And most importantly, it satisfies my need for mechanical things to just move more. This drawer holds a dovetail saw, a combo square, and a 12 inch ruler.
This drawer holds a mallet and a screwdriver. And since it didn't need a bottom, I didn't make a bottom. Optimization of materials. Wild stuff. When the drawer pulls out, it pulls on this little tab which releases the drill bits and makes them flip upwards. For this one, the latching system is right up here. These are all the tools that have a predefined spot in the toolbox. And then there's the two drawers with extra space. I find it convenient that every single tool has its own defined space, but of course this is because I'm building my own toolbox. If I was making this for someone else, it would be super limiting.
I hope you guys enjoyed this series as much as I enjoyed making it. If you would like to support the channel, commenting, sharing, and subscribing goes a long way. You can even join my Patreon if you would like to support some more, and it gives you early access to videos and a few other perks. On that note, thanks a lot to my Patreons, and thanks a lot for watching. In my next video, I'm going to be working with some, uh, probably working with some wood. So if you would like to subscribe, you can keep up to date with the woodworking projects that, that will be working with wood in the next woodworking project. That would be cool.